Okay. Okay, so uh, this video is going to show you how to do some taping for the knee. And there's a few things you need to know. And one is that some people are allergic to the adhesive and tape and that will irritate the skin. So if you get uh, irritation from things like band-aids and things like that, that will, this tape will be worse than that. And then we'd recommend not doing it. Some people who still want to do it, or they do the tape and it helps, but then they see the skin's irritated, then they can put on calamine lotion and let it dry. Or some people use milk of magnesia, put it on, let it dry, and then tape over that, and that eliminates some of the irritation. For the knee tape, most of the time it's going to loosen up after about eight hours and it will lose its effectiveness and then you can just take it off, especially for the one on the kneecap. The fat pad one, that might stay there for longer. You can keep it on for maybe 48 hours one time, but then you need to let the skin have a substantial break after that. If you're taping at home, you probably want to tape during the day and then take it off at night and do that for a period of time until you don't need it any longer. You need the tape. So this is the one type of tape. It's called Luco tape. And then this is the other one. It's called Cover Roll tape. Okay. So then you've got the brown. This is the one. This is the Luco tape. This is the Cover Roll. Usually when we're going to tape the kneecap, we want to have it in a bent position because if we tape it too straight, it makes it really hard to bend the knee and do the stretches. And most of the problems we have with kneecap difficult pain is in the bent position, whereas the fat pad issues are often more in this fully straightened position. So we want to take the fat pad with it straight, with the, uh, with the patellofemoral joint, we're going to tape it with the bent. And so we've got two options, I'll show you both. So we've got this one. So we want to get a bit of tape and we want to go around to basically the hamstring tendon there. See that? So we want to go from there and we want to cover the kneecap and I go about a centimetre beyond the edge of the kneecap. Now the trick here and where most people get messed up is they put the tape too, light, too high or too low. So in the beginning, what we sort of do is say, get a hold of that kneecap and draw lines on it. And then sort of say, okay, well, that's where the kneecap is. I need this tape to kind of go in the middle of that, like so. Now, while I'm doing this, the main reason my patients are given this is to put tension on the lateral structures of the patella. We don't really believe in the patella malalignment issue much anymore. But So the main reason we give it to them is to put tension on these lateral structures so that it helps stretch them out. The second reason we give it to them is to make an activity that hurts, hurt less. So if they're running and they're getting patella femoral pain and we tape their knee as part of their treatment and they have less pain with running, then we think that's a good thing in the short term so they can run. And as the knee gets stronger and more flexible, they don't need the tape anymore. But we're not, we don't really believe the, the patellofemoral joint pain is a primarily a function of malalignment of the patella. We, we believe that there's evidence to say that that's partially true, but there's a lot of other factors, weakness, flexibility in the quads. But that's for a whole nother sort of situation. But just because I'm taping it in, I don't want you to think that that's the primary reason why people have patellofemoral pain. Okay, so we've got this tape. Now this is a bit tricky because we have to be able to put the tape on. So I'm going to just do what I normally do. So I put this here. And then I need to be able to put the tape on and glide the patella while I have the tape on. So basically you have to do this with your hand. You have to be able to move the patella over with your thumb and support the bottom part of the femur with your fingers. If your hand's not that big and you just reach to here, that's fine. But notice how I'm creating creases in this tape. So I put the tape on, I stick it down, 
I'm holding my hand like this, and I'm going to reach over, right? And then I'm going to lay the tape down. I'm going to pull with this tape, more, much more than we pulled with a fat pad tape. I'm going to lay that down. And if I did it good or well, I should have some creases in here. All right, so I'd say that's pretty good. How much we decide to tape it is going to vary depending on you. So that's one method of taping, and that's called the medial glide. All right, usually we do one of those. We do one of these. Now this one we put on top. Notice how I'm pushing it to get it to sort of stick down. And I'm going to do this same manoeuvre. I'm going to push down with my thumb. Instead of the other way I did this, didn't I? I did that. This time I'm on top of the tape, and I'm trying to push the inside part of my patella down. I've created creases in the brown tape. I'm going to lay that down there. And then I'm laying it down without letting my finger off. I don't want to sort of do this, let that off, and then lay it down because I get no creases. So I want to keep this here, lay it down. Tight. All right, and then I should see more creases. And then ideally what you do is you sort of say, well, is that enough for me? You know, we don't know how many Advil you need to feel better, so it's the same with tape. Do you need one strip of each? Do you just need one of these? Maybe you just need the tilting. Maybe you need the gliding. So if I just said to you, just do it, then I'd probably just do this. If you're trying to figure out if this, what makes running hurt less or what makes going downstairs hurt less, you try one of them and then you test what, what's the problem for you. And you say, oh, well, let me see how stepping down is. Well, you know, I feel a little bit better, but maybe I'd feel more better by putting on more tape. Okay? So then I will show you how to do it in sitting. So basically the, what, what I was saying there was you just have to sort of use trial and error to figure out what combination of medial glide and medial tilt works best for your knee. Usually we don't use more than two layers of each. Now, let's say I want to add some more. I still want my knee in about 30 degrees. And previously we put the tape on and I showed you this position where I'm reaching over with my opposite hand and I'm using my thumb to push the kneecap over I'm laying it down. Some of you will prefer to do this one where you use your fingers to pull it out, push it over, my, my index finger. And I'm using my same side hand and then I'm using my thumb to sort of pull up and I'm trying to create some creases there. Like so. Alright, and I can show that even the other way. I believe it can be done like this. So see how I'm, I can do the medial tilt like that also. Now this is way too much tape for me, but I'm just sort of doing it to sort of show you those two methods. So one was like this. One was like that. And like that. And we're trying to create tension there. Okay. The other thing you could do is you could sort of say, I don't like holding the tape. I want to cut it first. So you get how much length you need. Cut it. Put it on. And then just pull it down like so, just holding that. Some people would prefer that. Okay. Again, that's way too much. Usually we're doing, I do in about three layers. And then to get it off, Same thing. There's a lot of tension on this tape, so the skin will start to break down. So uh, you want to sort of be, you want to respect your skin, let it have rest from the tape, and only use the tape if you feel like it's benefiting you. And the tape is only really a short-term. It's not a long-term solution. It's just while you're in therapy, and then you get better and you don't need the tape anymore. Right? There'd be some people that would just use it for a high level activity just to get through that activity and then they take it off. There's no need to wear it unless you're doing something that's strenuous or painful. So you've got two options. One is short term in therapy we use it, I use it to stretch out lateral structures which works for my patients. 
And then the other reason to use it is to use it to make a functional activity like running or basketball less painful while you're doing that activity. All right? And so then you tape it for that activity and you take it off when you are done. Now, if you were going to do the fat pad, you want to have your legs straight. And you want to find some things that you need to sort of tape. So my fat pad doesn't need this tape right now because it's not hypertrophied, it's not swollen. If you're doing this, it's because your fat pad is sort of puffy right here. And so I'm going to tape mine like it's puffy, so you can sort of get the impression. So you want to find the fat pad, and you wouldn't do this on yourself, but you'd mark, you, you need to sort of know where the borders of it are, because you want to overlap, the, you want to cover those borders a little bit. You need to find, this is your kneecap, this is the patella tendon, and then this is your tibia, this is your tibial tuberosity. So you want to sort of find that. There you go. And then those are the main starting points. And then we're probably going to come up sort of to this area on the femoral condyles, a little bit beyond. So then you take the cover roll and you're going to measure it. So you're going to sort of put it, you want to cover all of that tibial tuberosity. You want to overlap the border of the fat pads. So I notice how I covered up that by about a half quarter of an inch. And then I'm going to run it up to sort of the top of my femur here, or to my femur there. So it's above my kneecap, let's say that. Let's, let's run this white tape up so it's just above the top of the kneecap. So we're going to take that. We're going to need one for each side. This stuff, you're just going to cut it. So like that. And then the trick is sort of peeling this off without having it stick to itself. So I'm going to try and overlap that, that line there. That would be the border of the puffy fat pad. We're going to try and cover that up. And the angle that you're going to do it on is going to vary depending on sort of how wide your knee is. If your knee's kind of thin, it'll probably be more of a I guess a, a, a 30 degree angle. If your knee's kind of wide, it'd be more like a 45 degree angle, so it'd be more like that. So same thing on this side. I'm gonna overlap there. Now that part's pretty easy. This is the only really tricky part. So with the tape, usually we tape with the roll in our hand. So we lay down, and then because we're using short strips, that's why they made this Luco P. The Luco P is extra sticky, more than the regular Luco. So they made it for short strips specifically for doing the kneecap, I believe. So I'm sticking it down. And now I'm going to give some tension here, but simultaneously I'm going to grab this swollen fat pad. I'm going to lift it up with my fingers so I'm supporting it. And I'm bringing my fingers towards the X that I drew on my leg or my tibial tuberosity. So I'm bringing this up and like that. And then I'm laying this down with minimal tension, right? But I would like to see some creases in the white tape. All right, so I've got some creases here and that's about as much tension as we want. And that will start to, you might start to see some wrinkles in the fat pad, the skin over the fat pad there, and that would be ideal. And it would be more noticeable if you actually had a fat pad, sort of a swollen fat pad or an irritated fat pad. So on this leg, we're going to stick that down there on where the X was, on this side, sorry. And then the same thing, notice how my fingers here are pulling up and towards the X, sort of parallel to the tape. I'm not going this way, I'm trying to pull that way to create some slack in the white tape so that when I lay down the brown tape with minimal tension, and if you can't rip the tape with your hands, you can cut it like this with scissors. Most of you will probably do that, all right? And then I can check that to see. Now with all of these things, it's hit or miss if it even does anything for you. So uh, try it, then walk around for that day and, and see if it improves. If it doesn't improve, you could try it again with a little bit more tension. And then if it still doesn't work from that, then I just say it's not working for you and I'll let it go. 
All right, so that's how you tape for the fat pad. Now, there is, often we're gonna tape the kneecap. And I'll just show you the way that we normally do it, and that's probably how I'm gonna tell you to do it, so that's what I'll show you. Sometimes we combine these two, sometimes we just do this version, sometimes we just do the top version. So I might take this off, because that's a good thing to show you. When you're taking off this tape, not so much with the white tape, but with the, the brown tape, it can sort of rip the skin a little bit. So it's good to sort of peel it back 180 degrees on itself. So we don't want to pull it off like this. Peel it back, hold the skin, and sort of peel the skin and the tape away from each other. All right. Okay, so we've got that off. Now we're going to tape the kneecap because we've got kneecap problems. Um, now, 